Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about backspin. Something that everybody enjoys seeing, that ball hit the green and rip back down towards the flag or away from the flag. Spin can be a help or a hindrance. Today I'm going to talk about trying to get the ball to back up down the green or just stop as quickly as possible. There's a few things that you need to consider uh, when you're looking for more backspin. One, you need, and this is probably top of the pile actually, you need greens that are receptive enough to make the ball spin back. That's top of the pile. Second, having a golf club and a golf ball that are going to produce a spin. And what I mean by that is a clean club face and a golf ball that's got some sort of soft cover or some sort of ability to create greater spin than a one piece hard golf ball, let's say. Then you need a decent lie. Hitting it out the rough always reduces spin because there's grass between club face and golf ball. So that will slow your spin down, shall I say. And then if you're not playing downwind, you're playing into the wind or at least no wind, that will maximize your opportunity. So there's a few things that actually play into giving you the best possible chance to spin the golf ball. I wanna to talk to you about the dynamics of the club head and the golf ball and what they need to do to make your spin occur. Again, to the best of your ability. And what I mean by the best of your ability is club head speed. Ultimately, club head speed, along with good contact, will deliver a certain spin rate. There's a maximum that spin will be able to be created due to the club head speed that you have. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. There's a lot to get through here, so I'm gonna crack on. Uh, so up on the screen here, we've got quite a few numbers. This goes against my grain as a golf coach. I hate coming into a golf lesson and watching others coach when they've got a plethora of numbers along the bottom. I just think for the, well, I think even for the best in the game, I think it's confusing because you're hitting shots and then you're searching through the data and I think it has a real opportunity to scramble. So that's just my preference as a coach. For me, I always have attack angle, club path, face angle and face to path. I never put distance up, uh, I never put spin rates up, I never put launch angle up, spin loft, dynamic loft, all of these numbers that really just aim to confuse a golfer. So today I've gone against that and I've gone a little bit greater in detail with the numbers so I've got attack angle, the furthest left box, face to path angle. Face to path angle is dictating the spin in terms of the horizontal spin, whether it bends left or bends right. Then I've got the dynamic loft of the golf club at strike. Talk a bit more about that in a mo. Spin loft, that's the spin that the golf ball is feeling that is gonna create the spin that the ball feels. The land angle, this is a biggie how the ball lands on the floor. Again, going to explain a little bit more about that. Carry and total. The reason why I put carry and total up is because really what you're looking for as a golfer is the point where the ball hits the floor and then you see a reactive total distance. So when the ball hits the floor, if you were seeing it at 98 yards, you'd then want to see something at 97, 96, 95 because then we know it's backed up. And then we've got the, the spin rate on the right hand side. And ironically, out of all of this, the spin rate number is actually uh, the least uh, important number really, because as a golfer, you don't see the spin. All you see is the end result, don't you? You see where the ball's pitched and then where it's finished. So actually the spin rate's irrelevant. And the reason for that is because your land angle the angle that the golf ball's coming into the ground at, in conjunction with the spin, will make the golf ball react the way you want it to. And so I'm gonna talk about land angle first. And so I've got two golf balls here. One I'm gonna drop from 90 degrees, yeah, straight down. 90 degrees relative to the floor, of course. I'm gonna drop it straight down I'm hitting it in this direction, let's say. I'm gonna drop it straight down. It's got no spin on it. I'm just gonna drop it dead. You can see it landed and stopped pretty much on its point. I only jumped forwards because of the nap of the mat. 
Now I'm going to drop a golf ball with no spin on it. And I'm going to try and throw it at 45 degrees and throw it at the TV screen. Won't hit the TV screen. Throw it at 45 degrees, no spin on it. And you can see that golf ball bounce forwards. So land angle has a huge play on how you see the ball react. I'm not going to talk to you about necessarily the tolerances. I'm just trying to give you the understanding of what creates your ball to react the way you want it to. And ultimately, a golfer wants to see that ball spin back. Again, not everyone's going to have that opportunity because your club head speed might not be able to give you the spin required to make the ball back up, but your land angle might. So stay tuned for a little bit more on that in a mo. So let's get on to hitting some shots because I think it's always nice to see. So on the right hand side, we've got the club face uh, and the impact location. I thought I'd hit 50 or 60 golf balls and eventually try and find one where I could get it out the middle. <laughs> Fortunately, it only took me three. But uh, the reason why I've got the impact locator up on the right hand side here is because this gives us some nice insight on where I strike the golf ball because strike will have a part to play on that as well. So let's hit one and let's see, uh, see some numbers. I've got the, the, uh, the tightless RCT balls which are bespoke to Trapman which help it picking up all the data best as possible. So let's, let's just get one fired out there. I've got a pitching wedge here by the way. So let's see what happened there with that shot. <laughs> Would you believe? Didn't pick up the data. Let's go again. There we go. So, let's talk through it. So on the left-hand side here, I've got an attack angle of three degrees down. Now the dynamic loft that the golf ball felt and when they talk about dynamic loft, of course, we've got a static loft and we've got a dynamic loft. Let me just grab my loft angle here. When that golf club sits statically on the floor, this wedge, and I'm not going to talk about angles either, has this angle at address. When I then place it back to the golf ball, if I have some shaft lean, you can see that that loft angle reduces. So at impact, the golf ball felt 32.4 degrees of dynamic loft. Now the spin loft is an equation of the dynamic loft added to the attack angle. So by hitting down three degrees, I've created another three degrees of spin loft. So you can see the equation 32.4 plus the three degrees of down gave me a spin loft of 35.7. The number's kind of irrelevant really, and it's not a direct calculation of adding the attack angle to the dynamic loft, because what happens is, when you have a face to path value that's either slightly closed or slightly open, it will actually increase or decrease uh, the spin loft the golf ball feels. So it's not a, a straight add on or take away. So as you then create more downstrike, what happens is the dynamic loft goes down because we're reducing it, but the spin loft goes up. And I think that's an important part to understand. What that does is ultimately the more I hit down, which is what so many golfers thought was the way to hit or create more spin, actually drags the dynamic loft of the golf ball down. So I hit more down, I create less dynamic loft. In that, it does create some more spin loft, but unfortunately my ball comes out lower. My ball comes out lower, therefore the land angle that I explained, explained right at the start becomes less. And so when your land angle then becomes less, you then have less opportunity to make the ball spin backwards. It might spin back after the second, third or fourth bounce, but it won't go pitch and rip back. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So because of the 
attack angle and the spin loft, it made my land angle at 52.6 degrees. When the ball hit the floor, it pitched at 133, and it, the total was, well, let's call it 136. So it had three yards of jump out, pitched, stopped, and finished. That was the gap between the two. Now there is uh, a ceiling of spin loft, uh, and it's around 45 degrees. The maximum that a golf ball will start to spin at, it will then start to drop off. There's like a, a peak to creating the right amount of spin. That's around 45 degrees. So understanding therefore that by simply just hitting down on the golf ball, and I'm gonna show you this here, I'm gonna hit down more on this one. So I'm gonna try and create a six, seven, eight, nine degree uh, amount of attack angle and understand that our land angle was at 52.6. So I'm now gonna hit down on it more and, we, and, and remember, we had about a three yard jump out. So I'm now, and we've got 7,600 uh, revs. So I'm now gonna hit down on it more, which is what everyone would tend to wanna do. So I'm now down at 5.2 degrees of attack angle. I have made the golf ball come out a little bit lower because uh, um, the strike point did go up the face a touch, but the spin rate increased. Now again, you can see that I haven't reached the plateau yet of the spin loft. I did create some more spin. I didn't necessarily uh, drag the ball flight down. I struck the golf ball slightly above uh, the horizontal uh, center of gravity of the club face, which made the ball launch up a little bit. But my, la my land angle, has come down. I've created another th three yards, two yards of gap between the pitch point and the end point. You can therefore see that I didn't, just by hitting more down on it, I didn't make my ball react any better for it. I actually, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much exactly the same. I made a pitch point and an end point land exactly the same. So this time what I'm gonna try and do, I'm now tr gonna try and hit down less. So I should now start to see the land angle increase and let's see what happens to the spin rate. So I'm now gonna take my attack angle down to zero if I can. Don't fail me now Stuart in your ability to produce. So my attack angle, 0.6. That was handy. <laughs> so 0 0.6. So I've hit down five degrees less. I would still have seen a divot, but I didn't hit five degrees down. Remember, everyone's saying, I need to hit down on the golf ball a lot. But look what's happened to the spin rate. Hasn't changed really one iota changed a couple of hundred revs less. The golf ball now has landed at 129.9 yards and it stopped at 130 yards. So therefore it's jumped out 0.1 of a yard. That's the closest gap between pitch point and end point we've seen. Now my attack angle was the least I've hit down at, but what's happened is my land angle has now been improved. My land angle has now become a little bit more vertical by five degrees of land angle. That's what's created my golf ball to react in the way I wanted it to. It's made the golf ball come down with a decent amount of spin on, it's pitched and stopped dead. That's come from not hitting down as much. So think about all of the times people have said to you, I've got to hit a divot, I've got to hit down. That's what's going to create the spin on your golf ball. <sighs> if only we all knew that. <laughs> now remember, contact is premium with this stuff. If I get the strike point below the center of gravity, 
and you can see on the right hand side here my strike was right in the crosshair of the shot I'm now going to try and drag that strike point down I'll try and hit it on groove one two or three Stuart come on don't fail me now so struck it low on the face struck it low on the face the launch angle came down and of course to strike it low on the face I now have to create a bit more shaft lean for me anyway I could lift my circle up but again another story another long story you can see that the land angle has dragged itself down by 10 degrees and now all of a sudden my pitch point at 131 and the jump out at 137 is now six yards so that low trappy one that people talk about that ball has come out lower it's gone more forwards hasn't really had that much spin extra spin what tends to happen when you hit the golf ball low on the center of gravity it tends to make the shaft and the face buckle forwards and we'll see if I can get it even lower for you see what the reaction is so that was super low on the face that was rubbish so we won't use that data let's go again so again that was super low there we go so again land angle now look at the carry in the total you can see this land angle is a real key player we've lost 3,000 revs now to give you an understanding you could hit yourself a 7 iron at 5,600 revs if you got the land angle right you could see that ball back up so you can see that land angle is actually really quite an important component I'm now going to try and get the golf ball high on the face and let's see what reaction that has to the golf shot there she is up on the face you can see even with a half decent strike there look how the spin rates dropped off really quite dead land angles increased and even with a land angle of 49 degrees I've still seen a what's that seven seven yard pitch and end point so you can see the reaction of the golf ball because actually thinking about it remember I hit a shot where the attack angle was 0.6 down that's only a degree different look at how different that golf ball has reacted just because of where the contact point was caught it a little bit heavy as well so there's a lot going in there that makes the spin ultimately and this is a, probably the insight of this video it's understanding that contact is premium you could see as I started moving the strike around the face we started to get some spurious spin rates strike on the face is, is key your land angle is key the golf ball that you use is key and the surface you play off is key the next real piece of insight that you need to appreciate is how fast you swing the golf club at will ultimately dictate the spin rate so what I'm going to try to do here I'm going to use these two these golf balls up here and this isn't look this isn't to confuse you in any way there's a lot of data here and, and you might want to go back and watch over this video a few times but what I'm trying to get across and hopefully I'm doing it is that there is a lot that goes into making the sport the ball spin but the the, the top of the pile of making the ball spin is ultimately or making the ball should I say react on the green appropriately is your land angle in conjunction with the contact the land angle will therefore be dictated by the golf club you use I'd love to make a four iron come in super super vertical but I can't because I haven't got the club head speed to make the ball launch 
and when you've got the club head speed of a Rory or a Dustin Johnson that really get the ball launching high, sure they've got some spin on it, but actually they're, they're trying to take spin down because if you can make the ball launch, you don't need the spin because the land angle will be so much stronger that will make the ball stop on the green. So actually you're looking to create half decent land angles. So let's just hit a, a couple of shots here and I wanna just change the swing speed a little bit and I'm just gonna pop the swing speed up on the, on the screen here. And I just wanna see if I can get a couple of consistent shots. So let's just start off with a standard pitching wedge here. So 80 miles an hour, I've got 3.4 attack angle, face to path was fairly neutral, I've got spin off to 37 degrees, my land angle was a nice, nice number at 53 degrees, 8,500 revs, I've got a pitch point and an end point that's pretty much on top of each other at 80 miles an hour. Now what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and bring that speed down and try and create the same shot if I can. So I've hit it softer. I've created nuts and bolts, the same shot. But because I've hit the golf ball softer, I'm sure I've trapped it slightly, just a fraction, but you can see my spin loft was ultimately pretty much the same. Good contact, but look, look at the, the land point and the end point. All of a sudden, now I've got four yards of jump out, whereas on the shot before, at 80 miles an hour, I couldn't make the ball behave in the same way. So when you see the guys on TV trying to get to the right point, they want to have a full shot that creates a good amount of spin and a land angle that's going to make the ball stop appropriately. I'm now going to pick my speed back up, try and get it sort of mid 80 miles an hour. And let's see what happens, trying to reproduce the same, the same shot here. So I've now hit that one a bit harder. So I'm up at 85 miles an hour. Attack angle was slightly less. Land angle was much the same. Revs was much the same. But look at what's happened uh, to, the, to the end point and pitch point. They're back on top of each other again. And that's just a difference in speed. The golf ball is just going to react and land differently. So therefore, I can't make the ball, or I can make the ball pitch and stop. So understanding that club speed has a big player on how your ball is going to be received at the green. There's a lot of information in there and we talked about you know, various bits of ingredient that make up the backspin on your golf ball. I'm trying to get across that it's not just as simple as hit down the ball spins, hit down your, your sacrifice the launch angle, your sacrifice the land angle, and what will end up happening is the ball won't react. If you get a premium strike and you have a good amount of club head speed for the club that you're using, which will mean you need to be at the right distance, you'll then see the golf ball at the green end start to behave and start to do the right things. So understand it's not just as simple as just smashing down on the golf ball because that doesn't work. Get yourself a nice clean golf ball, one that spins. Get yourself a nice clean club face. Get yourself a nice lie. Don't play downwind. Contact it well, and you'll create as much spin as the, your golf swing will produce. One final thought. There are guys and girls that will be open face golfers, the slices of the world and there will be guys that are hookers of the golf ball in the world. The Slice family are bigger spinners of the golf ball than hook spin golfers. Understand which family you belong and understand that you are either an adversary to spin hook player or someone that embraces spin slice player.
you'll understand that the slice player has more benefits going into the green, the hook player has more benefits off the tee. The hook player hits it further, the slice player hits it sl uh, shorter, but the slice player has a bit more spin, hook player has a little bit less spin. So you can see that <laughs> you're trying to, you get given you know, a handout in one area, you get taken away in another. So spin is a really important ingredient to golfers and how efficient they feel. Hopefully, I know I've sort of rambled on, I've darted around in a few shots there, but hopefully you've understood a little bit about spin and uh, there's another video that I'm going to do on this because I think there's just a big topic to cover and I can't cover it all in one, in one video because I don't want you falling asleep on me. If you've liked that video, hit the like button, share and subscribe with your friends and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.